everyone. Thanks once again for joining us here in the conversation. And it's it's doing indeed another year where we are, you know, addressing breast cancer awareness month. Mm-hmm. And we always try to bring somebody that could actually have the discussion with us to share information, their knowledge and their their, their expertise. All right. And so we do definitely want to thank like, you know, Dr. LeBlanc for joining us. And as Alyssa said, we do have this tradition here where we'd like to actually check in on the person. So I am actually hoping that I'm not the, we are not the first first people to check in and ask you, how have you been since COVID braced our shores and been around? Um, Not about your business and your profession. We want to know about you. How have you been dealing with the pandemic? And we do hope it has not affected you personally or your family. Me? Yes. (laughs) <laughs> good night <laughs> thank you for having me thank you. um you know it's it's been a challenge it's it's been um it's been up and down um more mm-hmm. so you know the, the pandemic is is has been just one of these things that made you realize again how you could expand your horizons wh- where you were limiting yourself in your mindset mm-hmm. but it also hit home on right. t- in terms of the fragility of life and as a physician um it, it hit home really and truly what you how much you really can do to save lives um i would say the pandemic allowed me to to focus on a lot of things that i probably didn't focus enough on as a woman and a mother um mm-hmm. and and so you know it's it's allowed me to change my life for the positive but i've also had some negative impact but mostly positive okay i have okay. i have not lost anyone yes. um close to me i've lost some patients and i've lost some friends but Mm -hmm. not not very close no family members Mm -hmm. you know um so that's a good thing but um i've seen i've seen it ravage some families that i know so it's it's been it's been trying but like with everybody i think i'm i'm very blessed so i will just look at my glass half full and say thank you (laughs) that's actually good to hear and i mean I know we know a lot of people have been dealing with the pandemic in their own individual way. We've seen a lot of people, um, you know, became hyperproductive. Some people cycles got through completely off with their sleep cycles and stuff like that. Productivity levels dropped, you know, and then there's people who were, you know, who lost their jobs and stuff. And that was a whole other mental issue. And I know a lot of things people didn't even talk about during COVID was the amount of suicides that happened, you know, and it, it, it just made us aware that, you know, life, we really need to do certain things and live um, because we really don't know how things are going to happen. As my children say, YOLO. So I learned to, YOLO. Yeah. Yeah, I, learned to, I learned to YOLO a little bit more. All the people tell you I YOLO a lot. Um, so it was, it was, you know, it was, <laughs> it was um, <laughs> I hope you're okay. <laughs> Is there a doctor in the house? <laughs> Definitely, right? <laughs> so, but so yeah, me, it, go ahead. It's been it's been interesting. I mean, and, and you know, like how y'all got this show due to COVID yeah. and and everything. You see, so that's that's a positive. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. And as you mentioned, as a as a mother and, and a wife, how was it? Has it been for the household? I mean, and I mean, as in your role, keeping certain things grounded, and you may have observed people mindset or emotions emotions may have been affected how has that been for you in dealing with that within that role those roles i think i'm again blessed <laughs> because um i'm a mother of five but i only have two in the house now wow. and okay. so um the the two that i have are quite grounded they they adapted quickly mm-hmm. um again we were blessed to have devices internet electricity sure big space you know separation yet come close kind of thing and you know the first couple months of covid i think it brought us closer as a family because we were all so busy my husband traveled so much you know so i mean for the first couple months you know you'd actually have family time you know i mean my kids got introduced to movies like smile orange and you um Mm -hmm. To serve with love, ah. to serve with love too. <laughs> uh, cat on the hot tin roof. I wow. mean, roots. 
Um, movies, yeah. you know, so <laughs> it was it was good. And as a black woman, although my children think I'm not black, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> as a black woman, um, it allowed us, especially with the Black Lives Matter movement, mm. to really impart on our kids the 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 meaning of what it is to be black and proud Mm -hmm. and and to understand racism at the different levels Mm -hmm. and so it got us to talk about politics and so my kids you know because while you you know you're black but then look at my color so then you know the whole thing in in blackness slave color so i get away with more you know that kind of thing so it allowed us to have those frank conversations and Mm -hmm. um it truly, I think, allowed us to 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 regroup and reset mm-hmm. and to run away from each other as well when we were ready. So it was good. And you know, exercise together, cook together, you know, it was it I must say that it, it made a difference in the family dynamic. Oh wow. Yeah. And I, I I can imagine those conversations, especially about, you know, race and stuff like that, because I actually have a friend in the US. His wife is Caucasian and he's black, and that conversation was a little heated for a while. So, but a lot of people tend to not get that. And I think it was important to teach our children that, you know, I always say this, and I learned this a long time ago there's the oppressed and the oppressor. But if we keep thinking in the mindset that we're oppressed, we will never come out of the oppression. Mm. You understand? That's, you know, Bob Marley said, free your mind from mental slavery. slavery. you know, these are the cards you're dealt. I agree. But that doesn't mean I have to be aggressive towards you because you're not black. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Show me your hand first. I'm not going to assume your hand. But when you show me your yeah. hand, I will deal with it at a different level. Yeah. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's, it's those kinds of things. Okay. So it, was, you know, it, was, it was a nice conversation. I think I think there's still more work to be done, but you know. <laughs> yeah, all, always, especially on always, those topics. Yeah, true. Right? So, yeah. Um, so I said, all right, let's get let's get into the meat of things. And I know we got a little snippet on your your biography, all right, that you began working with the Trinidad Tobago Council Society, and you are currently the chairman um, of the I'm country. The chairwoman, uh, boy. Chair, <laughs> sorry, I'm not reading. Chairperson, chairwoman, <laughs> chair, right? Longest standing NGO, right? But something we always um, try to get people to share especially for the, the younger, the new entrepreneurs and the business owners that, that watch. Um, we always like to tell people, you know, they need to know their why, as in, you know, why they got started in the profession or in the business they're in, because your why tends to ground you when, you know, money isn't always there or on the bad days, you always need to remember your why. So, you know, I'll just allow you to share, you know, your why and how you actually got mm-hmm. into it. All right. I, I think that is your story to tell. I, I have a piece in the bio here, but I, I kind of want you to tell that story. Correct. Yeah. Uh, um, my grandmother who raised me, um, <clears throat> she's actually, if, it's quite interesting. She's my step grandmother, but okay. she raised me. So, you know, I, from a long time, I learned that families had no steps. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're very, very close. I, you know, I, I would dare say she was like, a, she's a true mother to me and she was hit by cancer twice she survived the first one lived to tell the tale and then you know life threw us a curveball and she got hit with a second cancer and it was traumatic for us all because you know when you're just on the cusp of of being of gaining certain goals achieving certain goals that she supported you through so i was about to graduate my aunt was about was married and about to have kids, you know, different things in life, you know, those life events that you want her to be there for because she's been through the cuts, the scrapes, the babes, the dates, the, the everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Understand. You know, she was supposed to get my marriage, we're supposed to have a quick quick and all kinds of things. And and you know, it just wasn't meant to be. And um <laughs> it was traumatic. You're laughing at me, you know. So so it wasn't meant to be, and it was traumatic. We lost her, but I mean it was a nice passing because she was dynamic in her fight. Mm-hmm. She she gave it her all. She asked us permission to stop and to leave, you know, mm-hmm. with dignity. Wow. And she she was very clear, and so we got to say goodbye. And um when she passed i mean it's a huge hole in our heart up to this day you know we would sit i mean 
and and yeah. and and say how much we miss her i mean i used to pick up the phone and tell her you know what the boys did or and it, you know and and so um that left a void and when she died i knew she was a huge feminist and one who wanted to do a lot for young women and under, the underserved population and um i was going to start a foundation in her name and but i live in trinidad and i'm guy right right um so i want to do more for guyanese but i live in trinidad so i thought well let me hold off on that and then it was just serendipitous somebody called me asked me to be part of the cancer society i said you know what maybe this is what it's supposed to be and mm -hmm. that's where i am today and i can tell you that i've grown in in my work i've grown in my my philanthropic work i i've grown i i love what i do i i i i, I think she'll be very proud of what we're doing you know, and we, we aim to always have health equity, you know, access right. to screening when it comes to cancer and, you know, empowering young women and men, you know, about their health and stuff. So I think that drove me to this. And then, yeah, the, the rest is history. You know, she guides us. I think I think our ancestors guide us in different things. You know, I was supposed to get married one date and I end up getting married on her birthday, you know. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't planned. So I think there are things that happen, you know, I'm kind of airy fairy yeah. sometimes. And so I, I love what I do. Right. I do it in her name. I do it for her. I do it for all those that we've lost. And um, I really believe in, 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 in the fight and getting together to fight cancer, you know, and, and that's what brought me here. And that's what keeps me here. <laughs> See that, that is, that is a, a, a I would say it's a beautiful story or you see true even though with, with what has happened to for this to lead to that you know hearing it from you and you, i can still we can feel what you're saying in other yeah, ways yeah, right yeah. and hearing you say that you know you want us to fight leads me to my next question because you would have mentioned that yes you would have had clients that passed so in this fight now this is breast cancer uh, awareness month mm -hmm. in this fight now usually there'll be um a drive for women to always get checked and we, we have a, a nice balanced viewership here with, of men and women. So granted, yes, we always encourage the women to get checked and have these things done. Within the last two years, even with COVID or, or within the last five years, have you seen an increase in anything to do with men and, and the breast cancer or any cancer for that matter? In Trinidad and Tobago, men, male breast cancer is not as common. In the right. U.S., it's one in a hundred. Mm. Um, of breast cancer diagnoses for ma for male breast cancer, um, so but we have seen an increase in both populations for screening of cancer. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you that at first it was alarming when I looked at our figures. It was about sixty six percent of a positivity rate in detection with screening in the past year. Wow, um, in the past but, year sixty six. Yes, but wow. but you know what? We say, wow, but guess what? It was early detection. Because if you're screening, you're looking for disease in a so-called normal population. So right. at first, when I said the figure, I was like, oh, my God. And then I was like, but this is a good thing. Because that means increased survivorship. So we caught it early. So to me, the message is out there. And to me, we will continue to advocate and promote screening. But for both men and women, we have seen an increase in our clinics, which is amazing. And that allows us to really and truly give a better fighting chance to survivorship for all cancers, both um, prostate, cervical, breast cancer, and colorectal cancer, which are the cancers we screen for. Okay. Wow. And I, I, and I like the fact that it's still early stage because that is the main thing is when you, when you find out. So people are actually taking an interest in their health and i you said the last year so i'm wondering if because of covid people say you know what i need to get my health in check let's know you know do you believe that has been a, a been the driving factor behind that i think it was a driving factor but i also think we did ramp up our message and because everybody had to be home and we yeah. use a lot of social media the message was out there and we insisted don't let the pandemic delay your screening, you know, please get screened, get screened. So I really, I think it's a double whammy. 
with COVID pandemic, people were, you know, coming to terms with where am I health wise, but also social media being your only outlet when we were in lockdown, you know, and so we yeah. use that tool and we continue to use that tool, you know, to promote screening. Nice. Mike, you had a question just now? No, no, no. no, no. Okay, okay. I thought you were going to say something. Alistair? No, I didn't have really a question. Um, I think actually one question, and and it's, it's just a little bit of a, a, a sum up of what um, Christopher was speaking about, especially with respect to men stepping forward and, and taking that step to actually do their testing, etc. Is there still a stigma with respect to men going and actually checking for breast cancer? Is that stigma still around? Or are you seeing from, based on your observation of the data, that yeah, it's, it's that stigma is slowly having a decline right now is it still well i'm a man my men don't get breast cancer and this type of mentality towards it or is it declining at this well time? because there's no screening for men right mm -hmm. so it's basically educating men now west indian men mm. that they have breast tissue and that if you feel alone <laughs> get it worked up you understand mm -hmm. yeah. so telling a man he have breasts is a whole different ball game you understand <laughs> but you know i must say that i find that men would probably rather screen for breast cancer than prostate cancer <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah you understand the finger so i mean the reality is that i think um the women help men propel men mm. to the screen and the men with men help men because we're all inclusive at the cancer society and so i think it's so important just keeping that conversation the communication the education because uh. you know it's something new and and it's 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 possible because men may be exposed to different hormones you know so you, we look at different things and so i think it's about conversing but i don't find that men are averse to you know i think if a man feels a lump they're going to run you know they're going to go i don't think i think they'll probably shy away from the prostate exam versus a breast screening exam yeah most most definitely and i, I remember <laughs> I had a family member, um, he felt a lump on his arm, just randomly checking a day. And yeah, that freaked him out, right? Because it's not something that you usually would look for. But luckily for him, it wasn't anything to do with cancer, anything like that. It was just a cyst that formed from a, a zit or something like that. So he just had to go get cut open and he was fine. But it actually put in his mind thereafter that he does need to check. So you'll yeah. find that that little experience that little encounter made him more aware of the fact that you know what men could get this too and it wasn't something expected before you know so we're yeah. talking about this fight for cancer and if there was a, a message that should be shared tonight whether it's male or female in the fight for cancer whether it's in terms of precaution or otherwise what would it be lord father so <laughs> cancer is a lifestyle disease right, right? Mm -hmm. so the message has to be constant and consistent that we have to take care of our lifestyle we have to make those small yet impactful changes mm -hmm. that will make a huge difference because we have modifiable risk factors and we have factors we cannot modify and that the bigger one there is your genetics mm -hmm. so if you can modify and you could be told do not smoke do not vape do mm -hmm. not have excessive alcohol now you hear the word excessive because y'all had we had a conversation before the live my glass of wine downstairs right and that is water he cleaned <laughs> so, you know, no excessive alcohol intake look at what we eat you know um and that's a big one because people start to stress, am I gluten this? Am I gluten that? Am I wheat this? Am I lactose intolerant? And it's like, you know, we have to reset and we have to look at the quality of food that we put into our bodies. But does that mean I can't eat a piece of chocolate cake if I want it? No, you know, it's about moderation, but you can't have an excessive intake of processed foods, fruits that don't belong to our region, that not in season, and we eat in. Mm -hmm. We grow mm -hmm. up on papa, banana, mango, golden apple, jamun, orange, plum, yeah. orange cola, cherry, and I must eat an apple and a grape every day. You know? 
Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so I like an apple and a grape. I had an apple today, but then I had a banana yesterday. I had oh, football, okay. you know. So you have to. That is a huge conversation. That's but a it's big conversation. Have to continuously mold, and we have to, we have to demand of our CARICOM leaders. Mm. To put their money where their mouth is. Give us front of label packaging, right? Mm -hmm. Give us the front of package labeling information. When you go to KFC and you want a Zinger combo, tell me how much calories in that Zinger combo. Mm -hmm. Understand? When I add that Coke and up that Coke and put this, tell me what I eaten. Yep. yep. Because if you don't know how many times we have gone away and we think we're eating healthy and we want a salad and when you look the salad is a butter pecan chicken salad and when you look at how much calories in the salad it have more than the big mac hmm. you understand but if you don't know you think you're eating good you understand yeah. so i'm saying to our leaders and i'm not a politician tell us now let us let us get it right let us really fight the fat if that is because the ncds are our biggest killer in the caribbean wow. why is it we cannot as a region come together and live off of our land why are we consistently trying to be like that you oh. understand mm -hmm. so i love something from the first world i love to eat a chocolate that they make here I, you know but still we have things like tamarind ball, tolum, sugar cake. When the first world come and tell us, don't use coconut oil, we stop producing it. Now we have to buy coconut oil from the Philippines. Sure. They come and tell us, don't use this. And then we have to go and buy it from somewhere else when we had sure. it here. We had it first, yeah. Sure. So you come, you take what I have, you telling me what to do, but you dying. And now I have to pay more money for what I used to make for cheap. Good point. So I think people have to, <laughs> you see, I tell you all I have a dinner party, you know. <laughs> we, have, we have to take charge. Mm -hmm. And don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I understand what the food production industry had to do to match the population explosion. But we honestly need to have moderation on what we put into our bodies. We have mm -hmm. seen how COVID has impacted on our economy. Therefore, let us really and truly support local. Let us try to eat more local because that helps our economies. But most importantly, it helps our health. Sure. And the health of an economy is the wealth of an economy. True. You understand? So yep. I my message to everyone is, before you pick up the, the chip, you bring figure it. out mm -hmm. if that's the chip you should eat. You understand? Mm -hmm. So it is, it, it, what chip you eating? You understand? <laughs> wow. be, 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 eating the plantain, the sweet potato, the breadfruit, or the Irish potato? Or the Irish potato. And where it, where it fry? Mm -hmm. And where it come from? You understand yep. what I mean? True. Yep. Good. Yep. Because I don't look good in court clothes. Right? <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. So, so I I don't oh, somebody call me, tell yeah. them don't disturb. Tell myself. So I I yeah you have to do oh. you know you have to make small changes, right? right. I, I want to eat a bake, B do your bake home. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. And I eat no. bake every day. Nope. True. You understand? Nope. So, so these little things, if we integrate it into our okay. children's lifestyles, you hear the word lifestyle? So it's not supposed to be a prescription. Nope. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be something that we can do and that we look forward to. And that is what we need to do. Amazingly with exercise, effective sleep. And you ain't going to get it perfect every time. Nope. It's going to be imperfect one or two times. Trust me. I know. But to get some sleep, to learn your stress coping mechanisms, to, to, to have that holistic partial of, partial of the time right. is a big step in your proactivity to offset the NCDs, especially cancer, including cancer, I should say. So that's my message.
Yeah, I totally agree with that. And on and the flip side, please mm-hmm. don't get me started on how much <laughs> is allocated towards agriculture every year in the budget because I figured that might start you off again with respect to that one and why um, two prices I, are the I thank I thank the government of Trinidad and Tobago for our subvention. <laughs> <laughs> Sip on tea. You see, this is you see the thing is, and we mentioned she mentioned agriculture, and I'm like, yeah, because it was it was never ingrained or, or or put to give an effort to agriculture. I think that is something that was taken away. And now it's like you're trying to catch up and get youths involved with agriculture and stuff. You still want to go and dig no hole or do no work in no field. The, 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 the sad part is that. Trinidad seems to move based upon um, where money is currently coming in from. So, for example, when the oil boom and these things happen, we ignored everything else. There was no plan B. There was nothing to say for sustainability within the country. It was just basically, okay, we have oil, and we're going to have oil. Lock off sugar, oil. Yeah, everything else could could, could, could go. And Mm -hmm. I think now, with the whole scam, but to get things back in place, I personally find there's way too much imported items on our shelves. Yep. Like way too much. Way too much. And as somebody in the, in the fitness industry, when I do um with some clients, we we'll normally do a, a grocery shopping um date where we'll go to the grocery with them and we'll watch labels, we'll watch the content of different things, and sometimes they'll grab a something as simple as a, a as a juice. And on the juice, they say, Well, it's it's a hundred calories. I say, Yeah, but in that container has three servings. The, the, the part of reading. So you're drinking one bottle and thinking, well, a bottle of Coke is just XYZ calories, but that, that 20 ounce of Coke is not one seven. Yep. And we've not been taught to really pay attention to these things. So we drink a whole bottle of Coke in one sitting, like it's nothing. Then we Jeez, go to okay. KFC or Royal Castle or any of the others, and we buy these meals that are loaded with so much unhealthy things. But it's the norm, it's, it's shit out of culture now. Fast food, mm-hmm. you know, and it's it's to the point where, like everything you just said, Doc, I totally agree because on a daily basis, this is the same argument I have to raise a client. And then I, in reverse here, that when we talk about local items, the buyer said, they say, well, the mean trust that now, and it's because it's local and foreign items are, are opposed as better quality, you know, that kind of thing. And if when it comes to labeling, Sometimes our local produce and products aren't labeled correctly yeah. sometimes. Nice. So they don't seem as well put together as the, yeah. the foreign items. Yeah. Correct. You know, so then it, it's, it's like we battle like that. It's an uphill battle all the way. And no matter how many times I would say, go local first. And then, you know, so I tell my clients, go to the market instead of buying fresh produce from the grocery. Because most fresh produce in the grocery is not local. But then it's convenience. I remember waking up on a Saturday morning and my dad already in the market. Like, no, I don't know if that is a thing anymore, but... Yeah, it still, it still is. People crowd that market crazy, so yeah. yeah. But it's just, it's just a, ch- a shift in what we see as okay and not okay in, in some ways. Seeing the local produce as being more important in some ways and finding that balance because, like I said, it's moderation, but... It's also what we are fed media-wise to believe that this is the way to go, you know? And it's, it's up to us. The consumers have to make the decision. Agreed. Agreed. So true. Agreed. You, you, you mentioned there as well, I mean, apart from alcohol, even alcohol, because Trinidad's go boycott the show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about putting it into our bodies. All right? So when it comes to... You know, this the same thing we could be keeping on it, the fight against cancer and breast cancer and whatnot. What are is there any nutritional or or anything in regards to that you can share that we should be focusing on to help fight against that? That's the thing. It's just about moderation. Moderation. It's about decreasing your processed food intake, the sugar intake. You know, people think that it's plant-based alone, but not everybody can be plant-based. Yeah. So you have to look at your body. You have to know what your body can take. You know, should you have some days plant-based? For sure. But that doesn't mean everybody could be 100% plant-based. Now, sure. don't get me wrong. I'm not anti-plant-based at all. 
but you have to look at your body and how it assimilates and what it wants. But I think the major thing is to just look at the quality. You'll never be perfect, eh? Because there's going to be something that you're going to want and it's going to have something that it shouldn't have. You know what I mean? But it's how much of that you're taking. So all right. we all can't sit home and make our own yogurt, right? We all can't get fresh cow's milk. So will you, and oh. some of us grew up on UHT milk. Thankfully, I didn't. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But the reality is that you, you, we have to make a conscious decision as right. what it is we're going to eat so like my kids will know they know the ground provision i make uh, plantain chips instead of fries sometimes mm-hmm. you understand sweet potato instead of the the irish potato you know right. let us do it together you know what, what can we have you know if we if we have the snapper you know versus the salmon you know salmon, yep. that is pink you know what i mean so i'm not saying that you, you know because i you read and when you read and you hear how certain things are processed you have to think twice you yeah. know what i mean so so i think the most important thing about cancer prevention proactivity when it comes to cancer and what we put in our bodies is moderation mm-hmm. and doing as much as you can you know, not refrying your or in the same oil. Because once <clears> you <throat> heat that oil the first time and you reheat it, that's where the trans fats are coming in. Oh. You understand? So, yeah. you know, but I remember long ago, I used to keep the oil in a pot and just yeah. reheat it to fry the bake. Yes. And it's got oil expensive, but you yeah. have to throw it out. You have to throw it out. Yeah. You understand? How much oil you need? Do you really need that oil? You know, if you're going to have butter, yeah. have the bl- bl- butter, Anneli Cuss. Yeah. Have the butter. Don't yeah. have, I can't believe it's not butter. There's a reason you couldn't believe it's not butter. It's not you butter, understand? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if you want, you know, ghee, ghee, ghee is what our Indian ancestors yeah. have grown up on. Yeah. And, and, it's not bad in in minimum quantities, right? Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you, drink ghee every day. You know what I mean? So yeah. look at where our ancestry is. Look at how we eat. And if you want a Coke, I mean, you shouldn't want a Coke, right? But I ain't yeah. gonna lie. A cold Coke after six months stays real good. Eh? But if you want a Coke, you have the real Coke, not the Coke, zero Coke, zero Coke, Coke no Coke. No, no sugar, yeah. How it gets it. It's true. Yep. Something wrong. If you yeah, want yeah. to cook, why you don't think about the night, the orange one? You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's the same kind of thing. You mm-hmm. understand? So mm-hmm. I, I, you, you look at your sugar take. You know what I mean? Making a nice juice. Yes, fruit have sugar, but the sugar in the fruit is not the same as the processed sugar. The pro- you understand? So, mm-hmm. so look at those things. You know how can we? change use your fresh seasonings you know um it and let me tell you it hard it hard because i like to go to a restaurant and sit down and eat my nice food Thank but you. after lockdown the food don't taste the same yeah. because you were cooking <laughs> you understand yeah. and i am sorry to the restaurateurs I still will come and spend money. I mightn't spend as much, but the reality is, my food tastes better. Yeah. Understand? Yeah. So yep. when I, I, like I make different decisions because of what I did during the pandemic. You understand? Sure. So if we are to be proactive, and people are wondering why we get in cancer, why we see in cancer, we are stressed out. Yep. We are in fight or flight all the time. All we right. need to yep. bring it down. We need to take deep breaths. We need to be mindful. Right. We need to practice self-care. We need to try and make those small changes with our food intake. But you cannot overstress about it. Correct. Right. Because if you eat too clean, God help you if you go to a party. You mm-hmm. understand? Mm-hmm. But you Problems. This is the time when people just call me. So God help if you go to a party. You go to a party and then they have a puff, but you weren't eating puffs. So then your belly in nuts. You understand? Yeah. So try and figure it out. A little balance. You know a what I mean? Balance. Yep. Right? 
And then, so, so you don't need a probiotic. You could eat something fermented and you get it. You understand? Yeah. Look at you, look at how you're going. And, That's you know, I mean, y'all gonna have me here too long. You know, I tell y'all I have an appointment. So anyways, <laughs> the up, reality up. is that I need us to, to, to just be buddy up. Mm-hmm. And, right. and, and look at what we're doing from a local standpoint mm-hmm. and really analyze how our food in this region can be substituted and taste just as good. Instead of a potato salad, I can make a green fig salad. A green fig salad, yes. yes. That's right. yeah. yep. So I can make a sweet potato salad. Yep. You understand? I could make fufu instead of mashed potato. Mm-hmm. You understand? I, so <laughs> so sweet potato mash. So I'm not knocking the Irish potato. I'm just saying. Yep. Because God know I love a fry. Eh? I love a fry. But when I do a potato, a plantain chip like a fry, and I sit down with my ketchup and pepper, you hear what I put ketchup? You know what it have? Sugar. <laughs> but I put it, right? True. And I sit down and I eat it. It was plantain. So I offset the fact that I eat in fry. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so we have to, we have to be real. I am not going to come here and tell people, don't eat pork, don't eat red meat, don't eat. It's not going to make sense. True. But yeah. do it in moderation and look at the quality. You understand? Sure. Small steps, you know. We can get there, but small steps is what Agreed. we need to do. Wow, love I it. Agree. But look at the but you're look at the big the big things that they have to do, like making these drastic changes and not taking out of the small things they could do to keep yourself on track, you know. Simple as like, yes, here yeah, nobody restaurant conversation and like here people before the lockdown was 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 ended in a sense when before us was open people see that they're giving kfc a couple of days but they always taste different and thing and and i might have seen all they do realize that all they're asking for old oil right <laughs> but in it, it's sad that's what we get accustomed to that's what we like your body like yep. so people crave that and then when they had it the first time i have plans to tell my mike i went and take a little kfc boy and uh, my belly walk no, I chew up no. And it's because your yes, system rejecting it now. We don't want it now, yeah. Correct. Correct. So just accept it. And and I, I am not <laughs> knocking fast food. I'm not knocking yeah. that. We, we, we have it. It's a convenience. Yeah. But at the same time, we do have to make the right decisions. Correct. You understand? And they have to make the decisions. Why you can't be, why you can't serve me planting chips? You know, in Guyana, we could get planting chips instead of potato chips. Right. You understand? Okay. Mm-hmm. So you could go somewhere you got implanted instead of potato. So so you know, um hmm. just small things. And I, I really think that with cancer, get screened, get screened, get screened, don't stop getting screened, get educated, empower yourself, get sleep. Don't be in a fight or flight all the time. It will happen. We'll be in fight or flight one or two times, but we have to be grounded, we have to recoup, we have to exercise. You don't have to pay money to go to a gym. If you have a square, you're good. Everything free because of COVID. <laughs> Fit on YouTube, Nike, Adidas, all of them free. And we all get smartphones because of COVID. So all of them free. If you are disciplined, I mean, YouTube is like a world of freeness. YouTube is and it's thing you never, you know what I mean? So so we have to regroup. And, and that's all I'm asking. You know, and buddy up, you know, come and screen together, talk to each other, and, and we're here to help however we can at the Cancer Society. Lovely. No, I, 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 I don't want to keep you too long. I know we're, you know, you have your... You're calling me. <laughs> so I just want to ask one more thing, because we like to make sure people have tips and, and understand certain things that can, they can do. Now, we always know about this when it comes to checking for breast cancer, they always talk about checking for the lumps below your arm and stuff like that. Are there any other symptoms that people should look for when checking? Do at least self the size it? of the breast, any big change in size of the breast, a mm-hmm. rash on the breast, inversion of your nipple, discharge from one breast, redness on the breast, pain, uh, like a certain pain, a distentive mm-hmm. pain kind of thing, and pain that is not cyclical with your period. Um, those are possible signs and symptoms of breast cancer. So do your self breast exams, do your clinical breast exam, 
Do your mammogram when you do. Talk to your doctors. The ultrasound may be needed and the MRI may be needed. But it's a very holistic screening package. But don't be afraid. Look at your breasts. They're never going to be the same size unless you pay for them. But if they're changing in a big, big size, then it might be a warning sign. He is cracking up. And, you know, look at your breasts. If the skin starts to change, looking like an orange, it's not that you're getting old. Go to the doctor. Wow. Yes. I mean, and it. If you're feeling tired, but you're feeling a lump here and you ain't too sure what you're feeling, go to somebody else, let it feel it for you. It's best they feel it, you understand? Right. So those are the things, you know, real talk, bad manners. You know, just be aware, be aware. Right. Lovely. So, folks, now this is what we want on the on the conversation. We want things straight, no chaser. Even though we talk about Coca-Cola, right? <laughs> we're still keeping it straight, no chaser. All right? So we want to, add, I mean, guys, you have any closing questions, anything for her? Um, no closing yeah, questions. Um, yeah, I guess. Definitely All not. Right. I think um, the main thing that people have to know in terms of if you want more information on Trinidad and Tobago Cancer Society, you can check the site cancertt.com. That's cancertt.com. And you can get all the information that you need from there as well, too. So I just want to just plug that in for sure. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So we do want to thank everybody that tuned in tonight. And of course, we must thank our special guest, Mr. LeBlanc. It has been informative. It has been Definitely. you know, entertaining as well. All right. We, we, I, <laughs> thank I'm, you. I'm and such a I, topic, you know. I owe y'all. So next month, prostate cancer, you got me. I owe All you. Right. All right. You organize that for sure. <laughs> All right. So, so everybody tuned in. Make sure you join us again next week, Tuesday. For those that, you know, go ahead and share. All right. Like, comment. Let them know that they can find us on YouTube. Let them know they could come back to the mantle page and also watch a review of the show. All right. A replay, I should say, of the show. And yeah, let us know what you'll think. If you have any questions, please feel just send it and we'll ask Miss LeBlanc if she could share any more information on that. But once again, thank you for joining us. And until next week, Tuesday, please continue to adhere to all COVID regulations. Wash your Get hands. vaccinated, please. <laughs> well, are you vaccinated or not, people, please continue. All right, <laughs> wear your mask, wash your hands, and continue to practice social distancing. Please. The three right. W's yes. and the one V. Let's do this, people. Let's do this, people. Get out of this. Yes. Thank you so much, guys. It was a pleasure. Thank Love you. Love your show. We'll probably try and tune in all and right. follow all the advice I got before y'all came on. But thank you so much and keep up Lovely. the good work. All right. Good night, everybody. Take care. Be safe. Good night.